seconds till we're back, everybody. Tons of energy coming back Wait, out of the yes, commercial yes, break. Yes, New Day yes. in the ring, and they're waiting oh. on Bobby Lashley and MVP. Coming back in eight, seven, six. Tons of energy coming back out of commercial break. Yes. Three, two, one. Here we go. It is Let's see that energy out is there. A new day. Oh, wow, look at that. Three hours, three pages of notes. That's one page an hour. Sounds about right. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back. From you one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to do something I haven't done in a while. I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. and let you folks in on a little secret that's going to, well, not so much a secret, but stuff that's going to happen probably for this week, as well as what's happening next week. Yeah, because chaos has occurred. Yes, Brother Dino, I knew chaos would show up. So let's start off with some Monday Night Raw. Let's get this show started rip rolling. Um, starts with the quiz show. Quiz ball. Yeah. 20 minutes. Oh, there was some funny stuff there. It was, of course, obvious Colorado State. Marijuana law references. How many ounces are in a gram? Um, who is the most winningest quarterback in all of Denver Bronco history? And I think the one question that actually kind of zonked me, it was a Pickums, was the most made movie out of all of Shakespeare's plays. I knew it was going to be one of two. It was either going to be Macbeth or it was going to be Romeo and Juliet. I wasn't too sure. Was it Macbeth? No, Hamlet. Hamlet was the most remade movie. Yeah, Hamlet. It was a toss-up between a Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet. Because I swear, for every English class I ever took, I saw a different version of it. And the modern day version of Romeo and Juliet. I could have sworn there, there were more. I want to say 50 Cent was a part of one. I know there was a Leonardo DiCaprio. There's an old school one. It was probably a black and white one. I don't know. So many movies... I want to say even, why do I think a West Side Story had a lot of Romeo and Juliet elements in it? I could be mashing everything up and just saying, you know what, one guy from one family loves one girl from another family, they call it something else, and that's what happens. That might be it. I want to say there's been more Romeo and Juliet movies than Hamlet. It's so hard to tell. The last Hamlet movie I remember was the Mel Gibson Hamlet. But I swear, every couple years, they rehash the whole Romeo and Juliet theme. Which is kind of confusing. So they had that, so that was pretty interesting. Um, ironically, RK Bro won. Because, because of a conversion question from grams to ounces. Listen, folks. If you learn anything, it is to learn your metric system conversions. Yeah, you don't want to piss off Juan Carlos. That's a bad idea. You wind up dead. So yeah, I mean, if you have to go down that particular route to to earn money and sustain yourself, yeah, you need to know metric conversions. So yeah, that was kind of funny, and of course having the sports question. Randy Orton was great with the crowd, so that was okay. Uh, this led to our first match of the night. It was the Street Profits first to take on Alpha Academy. Uh, Otis jumped forward. She's like crash into him. I don't think Otis likes the Street Profits. That might harbor back to their days in NXT. I don't know, though. Um, and there was a good Collegian-style match. Chad Gable showing off his Collegian skills. Um... Angelo Dawkins showing off a little bit of what he could do. Angelo Dawkins, excellent Matt wrestler. I, I 
no complaints. Otis, Jesus, he's just too big and too strong for anyone to really handle. He just goes in there and starts running over people. Uh, Ford goes flying over the top rope onto Otis. Chad Gable, though, picks up a unique... He does an ankle pick. Again, I love collegiate wrestling moves. Ankle pick's great. Into an ankle lock. Great transition there. And then just kind of holds him down on his on uh, his shoulders for the pin. Unique. I like it. Again, has a little bit of everything there. And Chad also got a busted lip. So he, he, he's now officially a tough guy, baby. He bleed. He bleed like them baby faces should bleed. But his forehead's too smooth. He needs to do a blade job. Yeah. Blade job. Forehead's too smooth. Uh, cut it up a little bit. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take a busted lip. Busted lips are, are real. They, they, they really happen. <laughs> Yeah, generally busted lips besides in the hard way. So yeah, um Alpha Academy wins. Besides the downer of realizing that there was a twenty minute quiz show on. So again, I like the I enjoyed the mat wrestling aspect of it. It was good. You know what? Surf and turf match. Then there was a little bit of nonsense because there was a, a leader recap. Bobby Lashley came out with a promo. Oh, so good. Him and MVP are the greatest. MVP does his best Paul Heyman impersonation. Uh, then we had the Alexa Bliss recap. Oh, that's the end of the first page. Well, yeah, for the most part. Then we had AJ Styles versus Damian Priest. And this is for, like, the champ number uh, uh, to be a contender for his belt. Hey, I'd be fine with them putting a belt on AJ Styles. AJ Styles, at this point of his career doesn't necessarily need a belt. I'll, t I'll take him having a belt up any day of the week. Oh, yeah. I should do that. We'll see. <laughs> Craziness. Um, so it's AJ Styles versus Damien Priest. AJ Styles comes flying. Hits a cradle in the ring again. Great, great technical wrestling. Uh, good, good counter wrestling by both in this match. AJ Styles has that neck breaker, which looks so pretty. Damian Priest, he's a little too big, too strong. Kind of plants AJ Styles a couple times. Um, the Pele kick with Priest. Priest just lands on AJ Styles for a lucky pinfall. But it was only a two three count. It was always good. Um, AJ Styles eventually does hit the phenomenal four on Damian Priest. After being foiled once. AJ Styles wins. I can't complain about it. It's not like Dam Damian Priest, we do see wrestle. AJ Styles with a belt. Again, he doesn't need it. Damian Priest just doesn't do anything with it, though. Damian Priest, this might be that case where Damian Priest is better off chasing the belt than having it. Who knows? AJ Styles wins. Cheeseburger match. Then we had Ms. TV. Um, Maurice is amazing looking for having like three kids. Yeah. The Miz won. You know what? The Miz, he can say he's, he's a triple crown champion, two-time WWE champion, intercontinental champion, tag team champion, US champion, all the championships. He won when he got Maurice. That's it. He, he, he wins. Uh, he was interviewing Bray and Dominic. He had the line of the night where, where he said, You know what, Dominic, you're much taller than your dad. Maybe you are Eddie's kid. Oh, but Miz, you can't say that. Eddie's down there. Again, that's still one of the best lines delivered by Randy Orton. That, guy's such, that, that one line saying, Maybe you are Eddie's kid. And that pissed Ray off, as it should. Um... Ray should have mentioned something about Maurice and the who is Miz just winning Maurice. That that would have been funnier. Uh, so yeah, that was that. That led to the rematch of the Miz versus Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> a little dance off because again, Miz claims to be on uh, Dancing with the Stars. Not necessarily you really want to brag about. 
I wouldn't brag about it, but that's just me. Especially if you lose it. Yeah, because then you're just like, ah, pff. another chump. But yeah, a little bit of a dance off. Uh, Maurice pulls the legs. But you know what? The referee saw her. Maurice, you're out of here. So yeah. Oh, I have to give a thank, thank you to, to someone. Uh, Miz starts complaining. This gets out of the 619. Uh, then Ray Mysterio pulls the legs from Miz. This time he backs off and says, hey, not me, ref. Ref couldn't see anything. Whatever. Dominic was close enough. Yeah, he could have done something. Plausible deniability. That's the key thing in life. Uh, then Dominic pull, uh, did a roll-up through the ropes. He turned a 619 to a roll-up through the ropes. I was impressed with that move. This match again. Miz isn't bad in the ring. Dominic's, I mean, he has some of the best teachers ever. Solid cheeseburger match. Then we saw Austin Theory in Vince's office. Um, uh, I don't know. Then our next match was Bianca Belair versus Nikki Glenn Cross. Nikki either has to wear like all black pleather cat suit. Somehow she just has to ditch. Oh, I was better looking. Somehow she just has to ditch that whole superhero thing. I mean, she has to be like dark superhero. There has to be like stains on her uniform. There has to be rips and strategic areas on her outfit. Yeah. But yeah. I refuse to call her Nick, Nick, Nikki almost a superhero. She's Nikki Glenn Cross. Ugh, that just pains me to say Nikki Ash. Nikki Ass. She does have a great ass. And that's the only bad thing I'll say for this whole show. So yeah. Um, opening thought was pretty good. Uh, Bianca's definitely stronger. And Nikki Glenn Cross. Eventually, Nikki realizes she has to go up over the knees. Uh, hits the hamstring stomp. Uh, the half crab forever. Rest hold mania. Um, again, just the basement drop kick. Uh, Bianca, even on one leg, a little bit slow. She does the double body slam, double suplex. So that's a pretty good combination. Nikki hits the tornado DDT. Bianca Bella really shows her strength. On one leg, she hits Nikki Glenn Cross with a KOD. Um, Bianca Belair wins. Not a bad match. I just can't stand the fact that it's... I'll get over it. I'll be honest. This was a good. This was a good. Good enough match. Cheeseburger match. And then, oh, we have our 24-7 belt segment with, with Dana Brooke saying how good of a friend Reggie is. And then she kissed him on the cheek. Oh, and then they had that awkward pause where they're like, no, we're not going to do that. Because Reggie, you just got friend zoned. <laughs> Everyone knew what was, what was happening. Yes, Dana said, you're such a good friend. Yes, guys, how often have you heard that? You're such a good friend. That's when you just go do this. And that's and you know that's the that's that's the end. The, not even the beginning of the end. That's just the end. Let's see here. That was some stuff backstage. Again, the twenty four seven stuff has to like Go away quietly. Or become like the digital media champion. Having the three stooges of R-Truth, Tamina, and Tazawa running around backstage haplessly to Benny Hill music. Not not a good thing. Um, then we had Kevin Owens versus Austin Theory in a rematch. This was good. Kevin Owens is learning. Kevin Owens is a smart wrestler. He knows once he sees someone... He knows their moveset now. 
so he didn't. He got caught in the ring post, but he did not eat the steps, which is good. Kato did hit a flying cannonball. Uh, Austin though just stomps on Kevin Owens, which is great. Kevin Owens hits the top rope senton. Uh, however, he tried. He, he tried for a running senton. Ace the knees. That happened. Uh, Austin Theory goes for his neck. Goes for the, the ATL. KO gets out of that. Super kick. Stunner. The KO stunner. So Kevin Owens gets his victory back. I don't mind 50-50 booking. If they keep on doing this though. I don't know. We'll see. Again, they have a very li very limited roster. So they did cut a bunch of people like, like the Brian Kendrick. And I do believe that Brian Kendrick is right. Is that if there was a Bigfoot, we would find Bones a Bigfoot by now. So you might be right about that. The other stuff, uh, I'm going to stay away from. But yeah, uh, Kevin Owens wins. Cheeseburger match. Are you guys sensing a theme here? Yes, when the WWE does good wrestling, it's actually halfway decent. It's when they put do all the other garbage stuff is when it gets bad. So says the macho man. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then there was a leader promo with Becky. We, we did see Leo's thong of the hard way because <laughs> her pants kind of drooped a little bit. Still, best way to see a thong, folks. Um, yeah, so with that prediction, you know what my prediction is going to be. For the for the elimination chamber stuff, yeah, go home math. Even a better predictor than Steiner math. Then there was the boo so boo. I haven't booed so in a little while. Boo, boo so in a ville. Boo, the boo so in a ville moment. Um, she was in the back office with a broken arm with Adam Pierce. Kevin Owens says, but the people in Texas love me. The people in Texas hate you, Kevin Owens. What are you talking about? They're Texans. You're Canadian. You're confused about something there, buddy. Um, then we had probably like the low point of the night. We had Liv Morgan versus Dewdrop. Um, Dewdrop, <laughs> she had this fun splash. That's when Liv was like on, like on her knees. Dewdrop just splashes her. Hit some big clotheslines. The senton. Liv tries to work over the legs. Not, not very successfully, though. Um, Liv gets hit face first from the electric chair position. I thought she was dead. Uh, Liv tried. I don't know what Liv did. There are rumors that Liv said something kind of screwy. Yeah. So, Dewdrop won after the Vader bomb. This might have been the low point of the match. Low point of the show. Ham sandwich match. Oh, and then there was something on Twitter. Um, on Bait Wrestling, they will put up Twitter posts. And it was a Twitter post of Carmella with her one leg wrapped around Corey Graves. Sounds like someone is having impregnation fever baby fever baby someone's getting some sweet loving it ain't me yet yet <laughs> um so yeah there was more Alexa Bliss stuff ah that's the real low point of the show then we had Seth Rollins versus Riddle this is actually a pretty good, good rope running by Seth and Matt Riddle uh, Seth eventually crisscrosses enough, hits the sling blade. Seth, Seth's been making that sling blade look good, mainly because he's not using it all the freaking time. It comes out of nowhere, which is good. I want to see those moves come out every so often. Just when you're not expecting it just makes it seem better. Uh, uh, Seth <laughs> hit the barricade bomb. Oh, wow, just that sting. And, and Finn Balor about that. Uh, Riddle again. Then she does a little form comeback. Kevin Owens jumps in. Uh-oh. You know what that means, folks. 
We got ourselves a dust that's finished, baby. Nobody wins. In fact, I'm going to bring along my good friend Teddy Long and say, Holla, 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 player. Yeah, you know what that means. So then Randy Orton showed up. RKO'd. <laughs> Kevin Owens. <laughs> Kevin Owens just sees RKO's all the time. So yeah, this match, this was a dusty can of soup from the 1950s match. Had all the potential, but none of the bang. Uh, of course, holla, 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 player. This is going to lead to the RK Bro versus Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. Man, he's definitely in the fresher of the two people. Um, he starts to take it to both Seth Rollins. Kevin Owens is on the outside. Seth goes out there says, Wahoo! Oh, that hurt. What's wrong with you? Kevin Owens just talks. He's like, I just got RKO'd. Don't touch me. That hurts. <laughs> Kevin Owens is such a good talker. I will always applaud Kevin Owens' talking ability. Uh, Seth gets dropped to the table. Again, Randy is a strong person. A uh, riddle. Hits that twisted bow that he does. There was a kick out the release a super kick and a senton by Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens uh, hits a moonsault. <laughs> Kevin Owens does the arm ringer. <laughs> Riddle shouts to Seth Rollins, "Let me see the axe handle. <laughs> let me let me see the axe handle." Seth Rollins comes on. Oh. Classic move. Gotta love it. Double X handle smash to the shoulder. Kevin Owens is the best talker around. Um, does a double senton. Um, Seth. Again, does, does something twice. He didn't. Seth did miss the splash, and that looked like it actually really hurt. Uh, Orton, again, the safest power body slam ever off the ropes. Do the draping DDT setting up for the RKO, but no, it's not to be. Seth hits the stomp, the curbs, the curb stomp on Riddle. <laughs> Seth and Kevin Owens wins. Randy Orton's upset. For, for, for Ha Ha, he, he RKO's. Poor. Kevin Owens again. I'll tell you what, solid match. It was good. Cheeseburger match. Okay, so a little bit of news and notes. Oh, I do have someone to thank. That's that was that thing I couldn't see. Yes, let's see here. So let me give out a shout out. Video shout out. You know what? Oh yeah. Roach Amiss. You sir. You win twice, because you get that six count.
Chris Hare. Let's see here. A little bit about this week. Um, I have to close two nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays, so there's going to be no NXT nor Impact. Wednesday, I may or may not do an AEW show. Depends how I feel a little bit. That's how run down I am. Because I am going to go to the gym Tuesday. I am feeling much healthier. Thank, thank you guys for, for all your good wishes. Um, I don't know what I had. I'm hoping it was just a really bad cold. Maybe the flu. Probably COVID-19. But yeah, who knows. Who knows what it was. God knows I can't afford doctors nowadays. And my one dentist is, is retiring. So that's not good. So I have to close the two nights. Depending on how I feel on Wednesday, I may do the AEW show. I am feeling much better again. Thank you, everyone. I'm getting back to the gym. So I'm losing actually a little bit more weight because being sick took some tonnage off me. Um, I'd like to get down another 18 pounds. 18 pounds would be good to lose, ladies. But then... um. Yeah. Friday, I have to go visit a friend, drop off some stuff, pick up some stuff. Saturday. No, nothing's this Saturday. Sunday's Super Bowl. Next week. Next week is going to be pretty funky like the monkey. Because I work every day next week. Um, Valentine's Day, I am putting up my all ladies special. Have that card all made up. My Valentine's Day all lady special. So yeah, you can see that right there. And then probably the 15th, I have all my predictions. In fact, I might make this video this week. But my predictions, that's the triple A, Radio Reyes, the impact, no surrender. And what I could figure out for the WWE Elimination Chamber. That's going to suck. They might have one or two more matches. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait till SmackDown to do that. I'm okay with that. I could always do that Sunday. After I make that one video. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hopefully eventually I'll be getting towards a normal week. Eventually. Oh yeah, then the week following that, probably either the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, I'll be showing you what happens underneath the racetrack for Speed Week. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Uh, yeah, later. Bye.